Now we come to the following essential idea. Every process of saving and investment in capital goods requires adequate intertemporal coordination. I am speaking from an entrepreneurial standpoint. And as future entrepreneurs, your success will depend on this, you must be able to suitably coordinate your actions in the present with your actions in the future. What do I mean by this? Well, to give you a clear idea, it would be tragic if Robinson Crusoe made a mistake in the preparation of his capital good. And, in an excess of optimism, he sought to produce a capital good disproportionate to his saving. Imagine he decided on an act of sheer folly. Imagine that with his five days' worth of saved berries, he decided, I am going to produce a blast furnace. Well, intuitively, we would all respond, this guy is nuts. Robinson Crusoe has lost his mind. But, let us say he makes this error of judgment. There is a complete lack of proportion between the very modest saving within his reach, five days' worth of berries, and the grandiose project he wishes to carry out. I am thinking big, a blast furnace. And, of course, what happens? Well, once he has saved enough berries to live on for five days, he starts to build his blast furnace. He says, OK, I need to lay the foundations. So, he begins to lay the foundations. And, five days later, he realizes he has made only a hole. His hands are bloody, and he has eaten all the berries he saved. A monumental entrepreneurial error. He has squandered his savings on an overly ambitious capital good. At the end of the five days, he is just as poor as before. Even more so, because he is tired and his hands are bloody. Or imagine, this is less serious, that when the time comes to make the wooden stick, it takes him only two days. This is less critical, because what has happened here is that he has made an unnecessary sacrifice. He could have saved for just two days. This is less serious. He has not wasted his savings. He still has three days' worth of berries, and they could enable him to produce another capital good or to start building his shelter. What I'm trying to say is that we must suitably coordinate our present actions with our future actions, and avoid the errors of maladjustment and discoordination. I want you to very clearly understand the example of the total disproportion between modest saving and an overly ambitious capital good. I say this because, mutatis mutandis, this is the process the economy has gone through in recent years. On an aggregate level of society as a whole, to give you a taste of what we will be discussing, entrepreneurs have rushed to invest as if society's savings were much greater than it actually has been. In other words, we have committed the same error Robinson Crusoe committed when he wished to make a blast furnace based on five days' worth of saved berries. Why have entrepreneurs rushed to invest as if saving were much greater than it actually has been? What has deceived them and prompted them to undertake such madness? We are now discovering that many of the capital goods built cannot be completed or do not have a buyer. We can find the explanation in our last class, when we covered the process of credit expansion money created from nothing, in the form of loans, and given to entrepreneurs. But we will stop here. Now you can begin to intuit the theory of the cycle, which we will discuss in detail in this course.